from your official station of the Vols, WBLT, it's Big Orange Madness. Couldn't get a better start for Tennessee. They're up 9 nothing. Justin gets it the focus and he slams on the inbound. Who drops it for James? To Ziegler from the corner of three. He's gone. Ziegler from the corner. Knives to the basket. Lost the ball going in. But he bats it over to James. Who puts up a three and hits. <laughs> Drives with five seconds. Four seconds. Gives the focus. And down the lane. And he slams it. Oh, he broke it. Launch again. Josiah. Jordan James. Look at the basket. He opens for three. Good. Big play. Chandler lays it up and lays it in. He'll get fouled. And the Tennessee Volunteers are the SEC Tournament Champions. You guys did it. You yeah. guys did it, all right? You know what? We still got work to do. I was there, and that still gives me chills. Incredible work by VFL Films, and yes, Coach Barnes, still work to do to get to the top of the basketball world. Hi, everybody. I'm Rick Russo, and welcome to Big Orange Madness as the Vols and Lady Vols get ready to go dancing. Your Tennessee Volunteers, folks, are the three seed in the South region and will face 14 seed Longwood out of Farmville, Virginia in the first round. The game is at 245 on Thursday, and you can watch it on the mothership, WVLT. Now, if the guys win Thursday, and we expect they will, they would move on to face the winner of six seed Colorado State and 11 seed Michigan on Saturday. By the way, the contest between the Rams and Wolverines will also wear on CBS right before the Tennessee game tomorrow. Now, if the Vols win two games in Indianapolis, they would then travel to San Antonio for the Sweet 16. Again, what a run for the Big Orange in Tampa. It was certainly fun for me being there after watching Pat Summit and the Lady Vols win a national championship at that facility back in 2008. And then fast forward to the effort put forth by the Volunteers this past weekend truly special. Just how special were the Vols? Tennessee went 3-0 to win the championship, beating Mississippi State handily on Friday, then beating Kentucky on Saturday for the second time this season, and then beating the Aggies Sunday in that championship game. The Vols' defense was just stifling as they held A&M to just 31% shooting and 23 points under their season average. The Vols also good from beyond the arc, shooting about 43%, and that will be key moving forward, uh, making 12 out of of 28 compared to the Aggies 21% making only four of 19 so that was key uh, turnovers were about even this past Sunday while Tennessee struggled a little at the free throw line making just nine of 14 attempts that's certainly an area the Vols will need to sure up heading into the big dance now as happy as anyone about Tennessee's run through the SEC tournament was Burt Bertelkamp the former Vol and radio analyst on the Vol Network alongside Bob Kessling was on the last team previous to this one to win the SEC tournament title back in 1979. We had a chance to speak with Burt courtside down there in Tampa. Well, I was one of the players on that team. We're getting, we're getting old, we're getting up in years, but we still remember. And, you know, honestly, people ask me about this. It's been so long since we won the tournament. Our team is really playing well together. They, they got great chemistry. They play with great passion, and, and, and they play so hard. Great game against Texas A&M. Wow. So the, these guys have been business-like all season. I think they'll go back, they'll enjoy the victory, and it's, it's super for the fans to celebrate. But these guys will go to work, the coaches especially, and they'll have another good game plan. You know, I think we've just got it. We're in a groove, you know, and our guys got great chemistry. They, they love each other, and they play so hard. Your uh, call, what is that uh, after a big play? Money. Yeah. Money. <laughs> All right. Thank money. You. I'll tell you who's been money. How about number one? Kennedy Chandler. He was terrific in Tampa at both ends of the floor, playing solid defense out top and then coming up with clutch shots time and again. And all this after hurting his ankle in the opener against State. Well, his dad, Kylan, was on hand and had no doubt that the chef would stay in the kitchen and keep cooking. 
I'm not sitting down. I said, I know. I, I, I know your routine. And so what he did was he got with the trainers and they did a great job in reference to, uh, you know, getting him back on his feet as he should be. And he taped, taped it up and, and trained in the pool and, he, and here you go, you got the MVP. I came to Tennessee and thought I was, I was going to come in here, it's going to be easy. But Coach Barnes let me know that every game is going to be difficult, every game is not going to be easy. You're going to see different things, different reads, and I just love him for that. And I know that I, I want him to push me every single day to be the best player I could be. He's been working hard, you know, for, ever since he stopped playing basketball at five years old. So uh, it's been a dream of his, and those were his goals when he set when he committed to Tennessee. SEC championship, now we're on the road for a national championship. Oh, we hope so, Dad. And you know what? Kennedy Chandler will be the first to tell you he has so much respect for Coach Barnes and how Rick has helped develop him during his freshman season at Tennessee. But it isn't just Chandler. If I've heard it once, I've heard it a dozen times from this team about their closeness and how they owe, all of them, owe this season's success to the man at the top. We, we have to credit him because without him, we wouldn't be here. And without him, I wouldn't be half the player, half the man I am. And so, I mean, I just have so much love for him. So uh, we know how much he means for he means for every single one of us and for the whole team. So uh, we wanted to share that moment with him too. I think it's their time. I really do. I think it's their time, and I'm, I'm so proud of them because of I know the work they put in, how hard they've trained, and uh, they came to Tennessee to help us make it a special place. They've done that, but uh, uh, it, it's it's truly it's their time. It's their time. And among those on hand in Tampa to watch Rick Barnes and the Vols do their thing was a familiar face and old friend to East Tennessee basketball. Coach Dale Clayton, remember that name? Spent 24 years on the bench leading the Carson Newman Eagles program. He was down there in Florida representing nations of coaches. He's the vice president of that organization and a good friend of Coach Barnes. He's absolutely in Rick's corner and definitely believes in this Tennessee basketball team. It's a lot of pressure, isn't it, for these guys like like Coach Barnes? It is, and and unless you've been there and done it, you don't really understand. But the pressure's always on. But some guys like Coach Barnes, they're just so solid in everything that they believe that they, the pressure doesn't affect him the way it does a lot of other people. You know, we were just talking about Coach Barnes. What about this guy and the stability he brings and what he means to the sport of college basketball? Well, he's just one of the all-time greats. And what I like about him is. He's not just a good basketball coach, but he understands the value of coaching and how he can use coaching to impact the lives of the players and the coaches he's with, and he's very serious about doing that. Have you kept up at all with this Tennessee team? I'm very high on Tennessee, and because I work with all the coaches, I'm not supposed to be biased, but it's hard to not be biased with, with some of the coaches, and I just think they've got as good a chance as anyone to win. Love to hear that, and great to see Coach Clayton, who again, and for what it's worth, told me he thought the Vols were going to win it all in Tampa, and they did, and expects them to go a long way in this NCAA tournament. All right, folks, it's time for our first break of the evening. When we come back, it's off to Indy to check in with our Zach Rickens, who's hanging out with the Vols at the south region of this NCAA tournament. Hey, Zach. Hey, Rick. Yeah, Tennessee playing in its fourth straight NCAA tournament. We are breaking down its matchup tomorrow afternoon with the Longwood Lancers with VolQuest.com's Rob Lewis from Indianapolis live here in front of Gamebridge Arena. More on the Big Orange Madness. That's next. Carly's up for two awards. Kate Brown got the most nods with four, while co-hosts Kelsey Ballerini, Mickey Guyton, Freeland, and Cody Johnson all nabbed three. Carly will be performing at the show, which airs April 11th on CBS. And it's a super busy time for the 31-year-olds. Next, girl. Next month, she's headed on tour again with Kenny Chesney, Dan and Shay, and Old Dominion. And she just took home two ACM awards. I hear that you keep all the awards that you've collected at your entryway. <laughs> The entryway of your home. My dad jokes with me and says that my wall of stuff is uh -huh. obnoxious. And well, get used to it, Daddy. That's what I said. I said, Dad, listen, <laughs> I worked my entire life for this, so you're going to acknowledge all that when I walk in the house. I don't have any kids. That's my kids. Yep. <laughs> Carly, you worked hard for those babies. Be proud. And by the way, ET's going to have a week-long pre-party counting down to the CMTs. Yep, that is right. ET's coming to Music City for Nashville Week. I cannot wait. All right, now to country star Lauren Elena, who left the comforts of home for the jungle. Have you seen him on me? 
Inside the new reality show that is like a celebrity survivor. We're with the stars who signed up. I've never given up. And I'm sure as hell I'm not going to do it now. Then confessions come out when 90s TV cast reunite. I've never watched it. Plus the feel-good video of the day. How Russell Wilson and Sierra are spreading smiles in their new Colorado community. I'm going to make sure you keep dancing, okay? Okay. With thyroid eye disease, my whole world became about my eyes. I hid my bulging eyes, and double vision made things look like this. But then my doctor recommended Tebeza, a prescription medicine that treats thyroid eye disease. With my symptoms under control, things are really opening up. In a clinical study, nearly 7 out of 10 patients taking Tebeza saw improvements in double vision. Big Orange Madness is sponsored by Rusty Wallace Kia of Knoxville. Yeah, the players aren't the only ones getting ready. The band tuning up courtside this afternoon at Gamebridge Fieldhouse as they look to fire up the guys during their first round showdown with Longwood. They were absolutely terrific down in Tampa. Welcome back, everybody, to Big Orange Madness as the Vols return to Indianapolis for a second straight year in this NCAA tournament. Tennessee has played all cylinders. Time to head up to Indianapolis. Our Zach Rickens made the trip there to the Hoosier State. He's alongside Rob Lewis of our media partner, VolQuest.com. They are live again outside Gamebridge Fieldhouse. Good evening, Zach. Hi, Rick. Yeah, that's right. There was no Folky last year, no fans. And Rob Lewis, you were actually one of the few media members here, from at least from Knoxville, to make the trip to the Hoosier State. I guess I kind of want to get your perspective kind of starting off here as we have fans back. We have we heard from the band, the cheerleaders are back practicing today with the team. I guess what was kind of your experience last year and then kind of the players talked about that, how they're just a lot closer and they, they play more as a team this year because yeah. they've been together. It's, an, it's a night and day difference, Zach. Yeah. I mean, it was it was like a mausoleum in, in, there, <laughs> in there last year. You know, very limited capacity, very limited attendance for fans certainly no you know downtown Indy is buzzing tonight you know fans are starting to get, drift in here that was not the case last year it feels like March Madness this year and, and last year it felt anything but like March Madness it'll certainly feel more like March Madness here coming up we've got games starting at about 12 o'clock on WVLT tomorrow but going back to Tennessee and that loss against uh, Kentucky there in Rupp Arena 15 and 1 in SEC play 15 and 2 overall that lost on the road to Texas with that uh, last minute missed shot by Josiah Jordan James I guess Tennessee just uh, turning things around and they came and did some soul searching after that game I, I guess you asked Rick Barnes is this is your team playing its best basketball right now and he kind of gave you a, a decent answer this is kind of what he said well, I think any coach would tell you that, yeah, I, we've played good basketball. We wouldn't be where we are right now, but uh, we always talk about we can we can be better, and there are certain areas of the game that even on, on the defensive end and offensive end, we think that we can get better, and we need to get better because uh, every team in this tournament has played good basketball or they wouldn't be here, and they're playing at a high level this time of year and maybe realizing that there's another level that we can get to, and we got to try to get there. Rob, was that total, complete coach speak, or was there a little bit of truth to that? I think there was a little bit of truth to it, but I, I mean, I disagree with Coach, and you know, he's, he's not going to say this publicly, <laughs> but not everybody's playing their best basketball right sure. now. Not, I mean, you look at Auburn, what, what's yeah. happened to them since they were ranked number one. They really stumbled down the stretch, didn't win a game in Tampa in the SEC tournament. And I think the, the point you mentioned, Zach, I, I agree. The Kentucky game, when Tennessee went up there and got beat by 28, just, just weren't even competitive in, in most of the second half of that game. I think that was a turning point for this team. And we don't want to totally look past Longwood, I guess. A very good three-point shooting team, but that's also what Tennessee does best, especially on defense. That has been their calling card all season long, right? They were great in Tampa. Um, they, they've been really good all season long. They cranked it up another notch in the SEC tournament. The opponents in those three games shot 25% from behind the arc. Have you started to kind of look into some uh, game film and just kind of break down a possible matchup with Colorado State or I, Michigan in the I've second I've seen round? Michigan play quite yeah. a bit this year, and I would, I would lump that them into one of those teams that is not playing their best basketball. They're three games the above stretch. 500, yeah. Uh, and, you know, just, just piggyback the reputation of the Big Ten to get in. Have seen Colorado State play a little. I'm, I'm not going to pretend to be an expert, but the Mountain West, really tough league this year. Um, they're a veteran team. Play, play well together. I, that would be a tough matchup for Tennessee. I mean, Tennessee will obviously be favored. I will, I'd like Tennessee to advance there, but I think I, I would expect Colorado State to beat Michigan. And I think the Rams will be tough. Yeah, they got the Mountain West Player of the Year, Colorado State Rams, do in uh, in that on that team there. So, looking forward to uh, Longwood here coming up in Gamebridge Fieldhouse behind us. Here that game, of course, Rick coming up 2:45 tomorrow only 
on WVLT. We'll send it back to you. And Rob Lewis reporting live for us outside the arena there in Indianapolis. All right, so what about UT's opponent, the Longwood Lancers out of Farmville, Virginia? It's a public college founded in 1839. Their enrollment just 4,800 students. Compare that to the over 30,000 here on Rocky Top. Uh, the Lancers do play out of the Big South uh, Conference and are the tournament champions or the conference champions beating Winthrop 79-58. Uh, this is the first ever NCAA tournament appearance for these guys. And right now they're riding the nation's fifth longest active win streak at eight games. Tennessee nor Rick Barnes as a coach has ever faced Longwood and both the Vols and the Lancers are undefeated against Big South teams this season and in putting these uh, two teams up against each other uh, keep in mind the Lancers play out of the Big South same amount of wins and rebounds with Tennessee giving up uh, three fewer points per game and oh yeah the Vols are the SEC tourney champion so the volunteers and lancers get ready to lace it up tomorrow hey although the vols and lancers have never faced each other uh this season they have two common opponents presbyterian and usc upstate longwood beat uh, both as did tennessee well stay with us folks there's more to come on this edition of the big orange madness as your lady vols are also dancing for their 40th consecutive season we'll hear from coach kelly harper as tennessee prepares for its first round matchup saturday in thompson bowling arena we're coming right back thanks to covenant health's network i was sent to knoxville for surgery I realize now in that moment, they saved my life. Covenant Health, for every moment. Have you ever dreamed of doing more? We can help you get there. With the full range of programs, from the School of Computer Science and Engineering, from certificates to masters, there's no limit to how far you can go with South College, where dreams find direction. Enrolling now. At Firehouse Subs, a portion of every purchase helps provide life-saving equipment to first responders across the country. So at Firehouse Subs, we don't just make subs, we make subs that are big, bold, and craveable. We make our subs differently because our subs make a difference. Whether you order online or on our app, Firehouse Subs Rapid Rescue to Go will have your subs boxed, bagged, and ready for pickup. Firehouse Subs. Enjoy more subs. Save more lives. Friends have been inviting friends to eat lemon cookies for 40 years. My family loves these lemon cookies. Ham and Goody's Lemon Cookies have been bringing East Tennessee together for over 40 years. Pick up a box at one of our three area locations or order online at hamandgoodies.com. These were the pants I wore for my gastric bypass. Al Roker celebrated the 20th anniversary of the surgery by hopping back into a size 54 jeans. At the time, Al weighed in at 340 pounds. He vowed, I'm never going back. Wow. We are so proud of you, Al. Incredible. All right, now let's jump back 27 years ago to the premiere of Party of Five. Look at that face. Scott Wolf was just 26 when he started that show. Big Orange Madness is sponsored by Rusty Wallace Kia of Knoxville. Welcome back and thanks for checking out our Big Orange Madness tournament preview special. Like the men, the Lady Vols are also dancing. They enter this year's tourney as a four seed. Again, this is their 40th consecutive season making the tournament, the only program to make every tourney. The ladies will play 12 seed Buffalo on Saturday at 3 p.m. right here in town at TBA. Uh, that game airs on ABC. If the Lady Vols win this one, they would play the winner of five seed Oregon and 12 seed Belmont. So what's it going to take Coach Harper to make a tournament run? Well, I think our players know that while when we were playing well, we were playing with toughness and, you know, we've really reiterated that toughness wins in March and hopefully we have those positive experiences to draw from also maybe some negative experiences to try to go away from you get to March you're you're building on everything that you have done all season long so as the coach mentioned, the ladies have had to overcome some adversity this season, in particular the loss of players Kean Green and Jordan Horston. They've had to be tough 
but not as tough as the team's strength and conditioning coach, Brian Tatum. But with the support from many and the will to survive, Tatum is back living his passion and sharing his toughness with Our Lady Vols. After the transition at Auburn had ended, you know, seven years with football and falling in love with the players, we were kind of in transition. And I told my wife, I was like, I'm done. He was like, I don't know if I want to coach in college again. And I brought up, well, what if Kelly called? And he was like, well, if Kelly called, we'll have a conversation. We've worked together before, and she really values you as a person. And it's always felt like family. We got a call in May from John and Kelly, and I knew right then, we're moving. I got the results on June 30th. I was diagnosed with stage four diffused large B-cell lymphoma. You know, that's a, a punch to the gut, for lack of a better term. How do you, how do you really handle that news? Um, it's just like everything stopped for a second. So I sat down at his desk and Coach Kelly comes in and she sits down and she's like, are you okay? And I was like, I'm fine, I'm fine, we've got this. And she's like, you've got this. And she's like, and you've got us. We're here, whatever you need, we've got you. And I was like, okay. We wanted to support him the best we could. I mean, here he just moved to Knoxville. You know, they just bought a house. Their family's just now gonna get settled and then he's got to start um, working through chemotherapy. When you hear cancer, your mind goes to a lot of bad places. I told him, I was like, what is the one thing that you teach your athletes? I always give them this little simple thing. You know, I tell them E plus R equals O. Essentially, it applies to everything in life. Events happen, some are within your control, some you're just, you know, it happens. The physical side <laughs> sucks. It's so hard to describe if you've never had to go through chemo. It hits you hard, it, it's body aches, bloated, constantly sick. Me being kinda stubborn to some degree, I still tried to work as much as possible. He's so passionate about what he does and our team and he loves them and he wants to win, he wants to give everything he can, but he couldn't. When we got to go in and his white blood cell count was good, you know, Dr. Handel's like, you're right there. You're right where we want you to be. We're gonna ring that bell today. I wanted to rip the stupid bell off the wall. I was so excited to be done with it. You know, it was pretty awesome. Um, but if you got to see the video, it doesn't look like anything special because they had so much Benadryl in me. Like, I was barely awake. Every day I wake up is a victory. When I get to see Allie and the kids, that's, that's what everything's about. Yeah, it is. Continued prayers for Coach Tatum and his family, and what a tremendous job of presenting his story by our friends at VFL Films. Stay with us, Vol Nation. We're back to wrap up this edition of Big Orange Madness after this timeout. And it's just, um, it doesn't have to be this exact thing verbatim, Leanne, does it? Just for News 4 Sports? As long as it's something like... Okay, cool. I gotcha. All right. I'm going to go ahead and read off um, 4 p.m. tag. Do we, do we know when they're using this, or is this for tomorrow, or... All right. All right. Um, sorry. All right, let's go 4 p.m. Like right now, three, two, one. The guys this afternoon saying those goals, of course, to reach a Final Four, win a national championship, the road to New Orleans starting tomorrow. Tennessee and Longwood coming up 145 Thursday, reporting in Indianapolis. Zach Rickens, News 4 Sports.
and we're going 5 p.m. Three, two, one. Tennessee's never played Longwood before, but it's 28-0 all time against members of the Big South Conference. Rick Barnes as a coach, also unbeaten, 23-0 against those schools. Vols and Lancers coming up tomorrow. Uh, let's just go ahead and do that after break. Sorry, guys. Yum, yum, get you some. Danoseasoning.com. Big Orange Madness is sponsored by Rusty Wallace Kia of Knoxville. Welcome back, folks, and what a run it's been, right, for one John Fulkerson. Six years with a program he genuinely loves. Finally, an SEC tournament title, and now the super senior sets his sights on college basketball's ultimate prize. Those times with some people that I love, um, it's times you'll never forget. And then I think that the biggest thing that, that we talked about is enjoying that, um, but then focusing back, and there's still a lot of work to do in us. Playing the way we are, um, I mean, we just got to stay focused and uh, keep playing together. John Fulkerson loved by his coaches, his teammates, and someone who is certainly a man of the fans who had a great time in Tampa, especially after all was said and done Sunday afternoon. We're just the best team in the country. On to March Madness, baby. To be a Tennessee ball. Their grit, their fastness, their desire to make us all happy, and we are so happy! Yeah! Hopefully we can get a good run out of it. Uh, Deacon Barnes comes out and just preaches his gospel on Sundays, and we love that. Go Vols, baby. I'm just excited for this team and Rick and all his leadership. They are volunteers, true and true. It's incredible. What Their passion on defense is awesome. Like it's watching them every time is incredible. No question. Tough, tough year for men's basketball in the SEC. Really proud of this group and excited to see what they can do in the NCAA tournament. Well, folks, can't wait for the excitement to continue. That's all our time for this edition of Big Orange Madness. If the Vols should win two games, and we certainly hope they do, we're back here next Wednesday. For Zach Rickens, our producer, Leanne Biddle, and everyone behind the scenes, I'm Rick Russo saying so long. Enjoy the madness and go Vols. We'll see you next time.